One of the things that I get a lot of comments about and questions about and concerns about is the cabin on the cliff. So I thought I would just do a generalized debriefing on that and the property itself. I've got my little knitting needle here as my pointer. Okay, the land itself that we own is 20 acres. This is where our main cabin is down here at the lake. And this is where the cabin on the cliff is being built. So this entire property is off grid. There is no legal road access to it. So we either come in by boat crossing the lake from the land over here. We drive in from the rail grade here. There's an old dismantled rail grade and we can hike down to the cabin there or to the main cabin. But the primary way that at least I go in is there is a road off way over here that goes way, way, way over and then over and over and over and over to our property. And that is a shared road amongst the property owners on this area. It's not really a road. It's more like a goat trail. It's quite horrific in all honesty, but I think it's being fixed up a little bit. We'll see. So just to make it clear, we fill up from the lake you know, to a little black 2,500 gallon tank to use in the main cabin. There is no water at all, like no water source for this cabin. Certainly you can take water up in your pack up this trail that we built. So even I built a trail all the way up this land, took us three years to build it and you can take it to that location and you have enough water for the day. It's not really realistic to carry water up that much. It's quite a steep trail, which I guess I could say that just to clarify, so from this main cabin to the rail grade is about 1800 vertical feet and to about, and to this cabin, it's about, what did I say? 13 or 1400 vertical feet. So from here, from the rail grade to the cabin on the cliff down, it's about four or 500 vertical feet. The best way for anything to get to this location is from the rail grade down. In terms of water, in the long term, certainly we could put a little black tank here, like we have at the main cabin. And what I would do is drive my truck in, park, have a, a water tank filled in my truck, and then hook up a one inch black water line to this little water tank and gravity feed that water into there. That would be something that we could do down the road if we think that we're gonna be spending quite a bit more time at this cabin. Well, I guess then I would talk about the size of the cabin. I've talked about that sort of before, it's 10 by 10. It's gonna be just a tiny little cabin and it's I'm calling it an accessory cabin because we already have a main cabin. This is gonna be more or less, you guys, honestly like a glorified shed. So it probably is gonna be insulated. But there's not gonna be like drywall and there's not gonna be wiring in the walls. It's really gonna be very basic. And the main reason for that is because of the difficulty in getting the materials there. And I just don't wanna spend like years and years and years building this cabin because I have other cabins that I wanna build. We would love to build another little cabin similar to this at our home property here down by the creek. It's already feeling like it's taking so long. Um, it's only gonna have one floor. I entertained putting a sleeping loft in. I may or may not. I honestly really just will see what it's like when I get in. The posts that I made, the four corner posts, those ones that are gonna determine the height of the walls are seven feet. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do the joinery. If I add the beams on the side beams, if they're gonna be flush with the posts, or if they're gonna sit a little bit higher up than the posts, then the walls would be a little bit more than seven feet, but they're basically gonna be around seven feet. Super basic accessory cabin. Sleeping you're going to a few times a year, maybe, we'll just have to see. I'm not honestly sure. Don't imagine it to be some posh two-story cabin. You might know by now that I work creatively and I don't really make plans for things. I'm just gonna see how it goes. Um, okay, so the winch, a lot of people are like, put a winch in or a zip line. And it's not that it's not possible, but that takes a lot of work, a lot of money to put a zip line type thing in. 
Steve would have to be highly involved in something like that and he is busy himself so he doesn't really have a whole lot of extra time. I think if anything is going to happen and I end up having to do it by myself what I would probably do is put a ATV winch here uh, and slide things down with the winch in some sort of big sleigh, clear a little bit of a path. There's less trees along here than there are here, which this is where I usually park here, take things down the stairs and start sliding down this way. And then I carry things over down over here. This little spot is a little bit more bare. It actually has the potential to take things down further towards the cabin rather than having to carry it. So if I was going to do anything, I would have a look at this area over here. But to be honest, as it is now, it's not that I mind taking things down the way that I'm doing it. It's certainly more time consuming and it's a bit hard on the materials, but it works for now. And I'll just see where I feel in the spring about the whole thing. Now, anchor bolts. Someone and a lot of people had concerns about the anchor bolts being the only thing keeping those foundation posts in the ground. One of the degrees that Steve has is a mechanical engineering degree. And it's actually a P-Eng that he's got. So professional engineer, he worked as a mechanical engineer, and then he moved on to something else, a different career. But so it was his plan to build them that way. I trust that he knows what he's doing. He's had a lot of experience in life doing lots of different things and he has no concerns about it at all. He does have plans to anchor things down um, with wire rope because he lived in Switzerland for a year and that's kind of what they do there. He wants to sort of replicate that look just because it really looks cool and it would also help keep it in its place. But he has no concerns about it going anywhere, so I don't either. I hope I covered enough information for people to understand sort of logistically what things are, what the property looks like, more or less bird's eye view. If I've missed something or you guys have more questions about this, just let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. I took guitar lessons when I was 10 years old for a school term. So eight months I took lessons, like a classical style. And I have my same music book as well. And every few years I pull the guitar out, dust it off, and reacquaint myself with a few of the silly little songs that I learned almost 30 years ago. One of the things that I read a lot of comments about um, is a suggestion to put covered structure over top of the whole mill, similarly to how I built the, the pole barn shed. It's entirely possible to do that. Uh, I think if I was a full-time Sawyer, super hardcore into it, then, then I would probably consider doing that. But I don't think I will. And that's because I do have other interests, other passions, other hobbies, and other obligations in life. I often take the times when it's not favorable to mill to do those other things. I often spend a lot more of my time in the off season in the kitchen. I've mentioned before, I'm the full-time cook, so I cook all of the meals for Steve and I, and we often eat different things, so I oftentimes cook two meals. So I will cook him dinner and then I will cook myself dinner. I also am the housekeeper. So this is a large home. It's like 4,600 square feet. I have a lot of cleaning I have to keep up, especially with um, five dogs, a cat, and two people that are busy and uh, a little bit messy sometimes. Yeah.
Um, someone asked, do you design or plan your smaller builds or do you go with the lumber you have on hand? No, I don't plan anything. Even the cabin on the cliff, I don't have a plan for. But in terms of the smaller stuff, I generally use the materials that I have as my inspiration, given the fact that I have something that I want to do. So for example, this little crate that I built, I made this maybe a month and a half ago. I needed a little bit of a kindling box and just something that I can throw scraps from the miter saw into the door that is in the doghouse. I had that given to me years ago and I didn't have a purpose for it for a long time. I mean, what it was used for was like a tabletop as extra space in the carport here for me, like putting the tools on and just junk, honestly. So I had built a quick makeshift rectangular shape with legs, laid that table on it. And once I used the door in the doghouse, I was left over with this rectangle with legs. Basically what I did is I flipped it upside down. So this is the rectangle. The legs, all four legs are here. I built the crate with that frame. So the same idea for this. Like Steven didn't have much organization to some things. So there was nothing ever to stack the wood on. He just stacked it on the ground. I just thought it'd be nice to have something that looked a little bit more organized to stack the wood on outside the door. Someone asked uh, what type of nurse I am. Currently I work as an endoscopy nurse. If you need a uh, scope down your throat, also known as a gastroscopy, or a scope up your bum, known as a colonoscopy, then I'm your girl. I did, uh, I did medical surgical nursing, like float nursing, kind of jack of all trades nursing for about nine years. And then about four and a half years ago, I moved over and worked, started working in endoscopy. Um, I did take a specialty course for that. I like it. It's a great job. Um, I love the hours and I love my coworkers. They look forward to my dog drama stories every week. I don't really know how to answer that. Someone asked, I would love to, I would like to know how you handle saws and woodcutters. I don't really know what that means, how I handle them with my hands. <laughs> Maybe sometimes a foot. I don't know what that means. Sorry. A little background on how you acquired so many of your skills. Was it just pure interest and determination or did you spend time in the trades? I did not spend any time in the trades. So I guess you could say it would be pure interest and determination. Yes. Now, I remember working with a girl in nursing years ago and she told me that she built a cabin for herself up in Dawson City in the Yukon. I was like, what? Like you built yourself a cabin like all by yourself? And she's like, yeah. And I was just like, how did you do that? I've got to know how to do that. And the same thing was with sewing. I taught myself maybe seven years ago, six years ago, how to sew because I had always wanted to learn how to sew. But so no, no time in the trades. Just like I'm so curious about it. I just want to learn as much as I can about it and do as many things as I can. It's a creative thing, I guess. Oh, considering the grizzlies in the area and just probably all the bears in the area, do you pack any heat just in case? No. The rules in Canada are very different than the rules in the United States. And I'm thinking that this person is from the United States. You have to take lots of courses and training and I, not interested. I don't hunt, so I don't feel like I have a need to have a gun. Uh, there are other ways to deter bears. I have the dogs typically with me, and they're like Riley is the best bear deterrent because Riley hates bears and he will chase bears away for sure. Now, I'm not saying that's foolproof, but I also I do have bear spray and I did get a horn 
I don't know, a really loud horn. And I've heard that that is a good deterrent as well. I'm just not that afraid of, of bears, to be honest, I suppose. I'd be more afraid of a cougar, but um, throw a cardboard box and the cougar would maybe hopefully go for the box instead of me. <laughs> Someone asked, nope, get back here. And it gets nervous, don't get nervous. If you were to assign a superlative to each pet, what would what would they be? Examples like most likely to eat a shoe, pack clown, most likely to wander off. A su superlative by definition is, I had to look it up. <laughs> Expressing the highest degree, the very highest degree, or the very best example of something. So I'm a little bit confused on if I should give the best example or just their most notable characteristic for this. Come here, Anna. Stop being so nervous. Come here, sit down. I wanna keep this a little bit short because I do actually want to do a full video on the pets and introducing them all. So I'll just keep it short and I will do the very best example. Sit, stop being so nervous. Hannah, although she's not being it right now, Hannah, I would say is the smiliest dog. Hannah is always like happy, <laughs> except when she's nervous. I need to give Hannah a medication. Maybe that's why she's nervous. Hannah has to get a medication for her arthritis. No, you get back here. Hannah is the oldest dog in the house and she's getting a bit stiff in her back end. So I've started her on a medication that's an injection and she gets it about once a month. Little dolly, it's okay. It's called Cartrophin and it's sort of like a hyaluronic acid lubricant for the joint. And it just goes in the back of her neck. Good girl. How is it? Show them your pretty, pretty blue eyes. Yeah. Well, Southgate loves company. Whenever we have company over, he's front row and center. He just loves people. And he loves the dogs. He loves all the dogs. Hates cats. Would try to kill another cat. Which is why he's the only cat in the house. What jobs did I have in my life? Okay, so outside of high school, I went to college for a year to take upgrades and to get some prerequisites to go into nursing. So once I had applied to nursing, I had to wait a couple of years. And so in between going to college and getting into nursing school, I waitressed. Um, I worked at Chinese restaurants, golf courses, pubs. I worked at lots of different um, places like that and earned a, a really good income, to be honest. Golf courses, I made some really good, really good money. Smile. <laughs> Smile. Oh my goodness, you hardly have any little teeth. A superlative for Riley, the little black dog. Little, little Riley is, Riley is the most independent little Riley. There, your job is done. Your role is done on film. Yes, I know. Yes, it is. I know you're shy. You're shy like your mom. You're shy. <laughs> okay, a superlative for Norton. Norton is the friendliest dog, friends to all. He's the neighborhood favorite. Everyone loves him and he just, he gets along with everyone. Little Scouty. Scout is unbelievably strong. He's a sassy little guy too. Aren't you sassy? Sassy. Saucy. Saucy like your mom. This is a hard, this is a tough one. Clyde, <laughs> look at him. Clyde is just the sweetest, gentlest soul of a dog. And he's got the best front teeth. Smile. He's got little chicklets. <laughs> you got little chicklets. If his name wasn't Clyde, I don't gone thought it was Cletus. <laughs> He's just a love bug. Just a sweetheart. Hello again. Someone had asked, 
about my boots or rather Foxy Roxy's boots. No, they are not Doc Martens. I got these boots at Valley Village around 10 or 11 years ago for $19.99. Another fun fact about me, I love thrift store shopping. I would say that 90% of my clothes are either hand-me-downs or from the thrift store. And also another fun fact, <laughs> I love me a good costume. Oh my darling, oh my darling, oh my darling Scouty Bear, you were lost and gone forever, but now you're home, dear Scouty Bear. Do I listen to music? I do. <laughs> These are Bose headphones and you would see me wearing them very frequently. So yes, I am often, most of the time, listening to music. Um, I do use them as like ear defenders as well. They have noise cancellation features on them. And that's also why I'm always, I always have my phone in my back pocket is because I'm usually listening, listening to music while I work. Someone asked what my proudest solo project is and I would easily say so far it would be the pole barn shed because I honestly haven't built that many things yet. Uh, that's the largest, what was took the longest and was the most challenging. So that would be the one I'm most proud of. Someone asked us where we would be in 10 years, where we think we would be in 10 years and what's the end goal or what's the goal? 10 years? Jeez, I'm not gonna be around, I'll be dead. What? Yeah, and you'll be on husband number Two or three, perhaps. <laughs> That's a tough one to answer because we don't really know what we're doing tomorrow or next weekend or next month, let alone in 10 years. But Steve will be retired from his career that he's in right now and embarking on a different career. We would be spending probably a lot more time on the sea, on the ocean, on the coast of British Columbia and up maybe to Alaska doing some fun things. I haven't seen this a lot, but a few people have asked whether or not I would set up a PayPal account or a Patreon account. I recently did sign up for monetization, so you'll probably notice that there are more ads on the videos. YouTube was putting ads on the videos anyway, which is kind of why I just decided to do it. I was on the fence for months about whether I would do it or not. Probably had a little bit of commit commitment issues to whether I was gonna continue making videos, but I thought that I would do it. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm stuck like glue to making YouTube videos. But in terms of a PayPal or Patreon, I don't really understand exactly what those things are, but it sort of just sounds like a donation fund. And it just feels a little bit uncomfortable for me to have my hand out um, collecting money that I don't really need. And it's, I think people's thoughts were that it could be towards the dogs, but the thing that would make me happy is maybe just take that money to your local SPCA or your charity organization of choice and make a donation there to um, someone that needs it more than me. I think that I would use the money that I earned through the ads and whatever, specifically for the channel things. So for sawmill things like blades and, and things to keep me going making videos. Maybe upgraded gear or, or what have you. Maybe I should get a drone. I read a lot of comments about how people feel that Steve is so lucky to have me. While I don't disagree with that, sure, like I, I think that he's lucky to have me, but I just want to express to everyone that you know I feel like I'm the lucky one to have him because if it weren't for him, let's be honest, I wouldn't be making these videos. Um, I wouldn't have this um, property to live on. I wouldn't have machines to play with and, and all of that stuff. I am grateful as heck to have him um, who supports me doing the things that I love in life. It's a great thing in a relationship when two people feel like they're each the lucky one. Yeah, we're both really lucky to have one another, I guess. Someone would like to know how we met. I guess you could say Steve and I met long before we became a couple. And I guess you could say that we met through work. The actual story of how we came to be as a couple is quite fascinating. It's 
almost like a story of fate. It's more than anyone has bargained for in this video. So the short answer is, yeah, I would say we met through work. Mm, and what does Steve think about me making YouTube videos? So Steve supports me to do whatever I would like. In all honesty, we are very similar in a lot of ways. We have a very common, similar sense of humor, but we are very different in terms of um, our creativeness. So he doesn't understand a lot of like why the videos are perhaps like as long as they are. And I've sort of talked about this or we've made a joke about this before that he says, well, you just like, you know, you're putting a pole on the ground, like dig a hole and put the pole on the ground. The video should be two minutes. Like what, what, why is it 20 minutes or 20 something minutes long? Like just put the pole on the ground and the video is done. So that's the only thing that he kind of doesn't understand. Although when he watches the video, he's like, oh, okay. Like I get it, <laughs> but he doesn't quite get it in some ways, but he supports me to, to, to do the videos. He knows that the long-term goal of me starting a YouTube channel and making videos is to hone my skills and to improve. There are future endeavors. There is a future journey that I will be documenting and making videos about. I don't know if it will be on this channel uh, or if I create a separate channel for that because it's not really about projects. It's about a boat and the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> but if that's something that people that watch my channel, that watch and follow along with us are interested in, then I can keep it here. All right, you guys, I'm throwing in the towel on this video. Like the saying goes, you can't make a racehorse out of a donkey. <laughs> no offense to donkeys. I like donkeys. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry, this is a long one. It's painful, I know. We all know for sure what Steve is gonna say about this one. What? Almost 30 minutes of talking about nothing? You're definitely gonna lose subscribers. I appreciate all of you sticking around to the end and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.